Hey Dusters, welcome back to the channel. Bit more of a simpler sit down and talk type video. Uh, obviously, you know, I do my picking and packing uh, weekend orders videos. Didn't manage to do one this week, really busy, got lots of things on behind the scenes. One that I won't mention just yet, but keep an eye out on the channel exciting thing happening got another birthday uh, Maisie is gonna be eight or well, she's eight today so yeah wish her a happy birthday in the comments uh, yeah just general busyness again still getting used to the unit still transferring over like I've spoke about many times so I won't bore you with that so I thought I'd sit down it's been a while I've done one previously uh, but I've picked out 10 orders that have gone for over a hundred pound highest being 500 yeah tasty things coming up really cool items i've picked out some things that are all slightly different so it's not just a load of the same type of item each one should have an individual type of story individual type of item to explain about so yeah should be a good good video so strap yourselves in grab a drink and let's crack on there's some juicy items here as you may know my reselling business i base on buying more quality so i might have to pay up a little bit and the target is to aim for higher prices so i haven't got thousands or hundreds and hundreds of items sitting around like i know people they message me why am i not picking up games like when they're free for a pound you can flip them for five to ten pounds get lots done that's not my thing i know people can do that and i could do that that's not me and this list here will show exactly what i'm aiming for obviously the higher end but i i, I aim to have at least an average selling price of uh, 40 pounds or so over 60 days but yeah these are the sort of cream of the crops if you'd like in the past i think it's about three months since i've done my last one so basically yep i could do lower ends and more often and keep them sales ticking over but yeah that's not me that's not my business aim i normally have between two and three hundred listings that seems to be a nice number they come in and i haven't got as much to wrap it might take slightly longer on some of them but i've I want the money basically <laughs> get it ticking in and get higher amounts in and the first item in the list is these rm william brown suede leather slip on craftsman chelsea boots size 7 uk now i picked these out because there's a time i had a two week period where i ran out of mobile data obviously i didn't know how much i needed for the unit because i'm using the like a new sim card and yeah i ran out even on my phone i ran out because i forgot i went live and used it all up so I went in blind, I actually rely on my phone more than I thought I did, uh, went out in the field finding items. And this was one I used all my knowledge that I know myself and put it to good use. Just in a local charity shop, picked these boots up and instantly I could tell like, oh, hello, these feel nice. Um, looked around the labels, so like good countries, obviously I say made in England, made in like USA, but these boots made in Australia. So, so far, two out of two, they feel good. I can just feel the quality and made in Australia, which is obviously a good name to have. Never had anything made in Australia that I know of. Never heard of the name RM Williams before. So that bit I wasn't sure on, but yeah, just the, the heel was like wooden, really nice thick leather, really good condition. The size was a seven, which I usually stay away from if I've got lots of shoes at the moment. Cause seven's that funny, bit small for men, slightly bigger women, can cross both paths, but yeah i picked them up anyway for six pounds because i thought that was a bargain going from my instincts basically and i was right these are high-end shoes like boots they make i checked out the website and these particular boots would go for 400 just over 400 pound new retail and that's why i got 100 pound took an offer i listed them at 149.99 i could have got more but from six pounds, someone's offered a hundred. I'm taking it, especially with boots in and out, boom, done. They paid straight away. So perfect result. They've got there safely. And yeah, just amazing. Never heard of this brand. I'm always learning. Yeah, you just never stop learning in this job. And my instincts, I taught myself well, which is quite good. One of my own tips that I give out in my videos and it paid off massively here. Good one. Next item is this nice surprise as well. Bought this in a Rayleigh charity shop championship match. You haven't seen the series. I'm going around Essex towns, ch checking out their charity shops, putting it in a league table. Bit of fun. People seem to like it. But yeah, this was round one of Rayleigh. Never heard of the brand again. 
I know I pick up a lot of clothing and shoes and that, but I'm nowhere near knowing all the names, especially with clothing. I just saw on this one, was Made in England, again, Made in England being a positive, but the seller was pure cashmere. It's 100% cashmere, it looked vintage, and also there's a royal crest, which also is a good giveaway. If I go to pay up, I'm not exactly sure how much I paid, but Made in England, royal crest, uh, Regent Street, London, which is also quite nice, and also 100% pure cashmere. All them things ticked all the boxes. I think I had to pay 10, I think it was for this, but this went for the full £110. Brilliant. I think I had offers on. I've had it for a while, listed for a little while, but obviously a higher end, obviously higher priced item, it might sit around for a little bit. But yeah, I got full asking price, even I had best offers on. Person that wanted it needed it for a holiday or a breakaway, so. Um, as they paid the four amount, I sent it next day delivery with Royal Mail, which covers up to £500, I believe. And also it did get there the next day. So gave them good quality service and they were really happy with it, which is amazing. I think this is a known brand to clothing sellers. But if you don't sell clothing as much like I do, drop this one down, Aqua Scutum. I think that's how you say it. But again, just even if you don't know the brand, just seeing the little other points, like what it's made from, where it's made, Royal Crests, just things like that. Get all the clues together, put them together, and you should have yourself a juicy one. Really cool item now. It's a Casio watch. I thought it was a calculator. This came from my big haul of electronics back in October time, I think it was. Had a case full of watches, loads of Casio calculators. I thought this was a calculator, so I looked closely. But it's actually a remote control watch. So there's certain types of TVs. I think this is 90s, maybe early 80s. Uh, you can actually change the channel through the watch, which is really cool. Never even knew that existed. At the time doing a deal, I knew this was going to be the most expensive Casio. Obviously done a deal. I think this owes me in the deal about 40 to 50 pound. Uh, this is also going for 110 pound. Again, had offers available. It was listed for two, three months, I think it was. This is off to China. Sold through eBay's global shipping program, which I highly recommend. If you're selling on eBay in any, any serious way, activate global shipping program it just opens the world up and it's so easy you're also covered against damages as soon as it gets to ebay's global shipping program if they damage it or if anything happens it gets lost you're covered you can sit back and relax also that goes against negative so if the buyer wants to leave a negative because it's gone missing once it's got to ebay's you're covered it ebay don't even show it on your account look into that if you haven't already and activate it so again paying up for quality like i always say 50 pound i've had to pay i've got 110 it's nice and light once again all tested and working sent out a fresh battery so again yeah as far as i know it's got this safe um it's sold a couple of weeks ago so i think it's got there by now yeah just really cool kinds of watches you can get casios that are calculators like this and they're not worth as much i sold one for 20 or 25 so you want the retro, the early retro ones, they fetch good money, especially TV remote control ones like this. Yeah, you're not going to come across them every day or every week at the boot sales or charity shops. So, yeah, just keep an eye out as soon as you see this. It looks cool, so it's standout anyway, and should be on to a winner. One of my favourite items, this. I love this. I've sold a couple of these throughout the years. I think I've shown this item in a picking video back in my smaller unit, and I messed the name up completely. Sounds quite rude if you say it wrong. But it's this one here, Facet. There we go, we'll say Facet. I said something else last time, which was quite rude, sorry. So Facet, made in Sweden, it's really heavy unit. I think it's made from cast iron part of it. It's a mechanical uh, calculator. You basically press the buttons, it comes up on the mini screen, you twist it, it does the calculation, and in the window, every time you twist it, it does the calculation by multiples. And yeah, just a really cool item. I'd really love to keep one of these myself for display at home. But when it's worth £120, like I sold it for, then yeah, it's got to go. It's got to be sold. Fitness owes me £20 from a boot sale. Bought this at the very end of the season. So £20 into £120. Perfect. That's exactly what I wish every sale was like. Cool item, interests me. And yeah, sold strong. Another boot sale find. This is an item, again, no interest to me, no knowledge. It looked cool. I picked it up. And the guy started speaking to me, he had a load of scuba diving gear. And I know that sort of sport isn't cheap. And he said to me at the time, this cost him a sort of five, six hundred pound new. So as soon as he said that, I'm thinking eBay, second hand, scuba diving, 500 pound item. It's got to be worth at least, what, 80 pounds pre-owned. I think I had to pay 40 pounds. So yet again, paying up for quality. 
took a chance. I didn't want to start opening up eBay straight in front of him. Again, working out things. Obviously, I know the sport is obviously expensive equipment. It's popular. People are going to pay up for quality. And I took his word for it. It wasn't like a dealer. It was a private person. He had loads of scuba diving stuff because it was obviously he's a scuba diver. Obviously, get rid of older stuff if he's upgraded. So yeah, I took a chance at 40 and I was right to do so because it sold for 120. It's not bad, not bad at all. Really pleased with this sale. I know Brio sort of wooden train sets can be worth good money and good bundles. But this is the biggest bundle I've ever had. It was huge. It was in a charity shop for 20 pounds recently. I think last month I picked it up. Wasn't sure initially because it was a longer, wider box. So it's sort of a thin layer and I wasn't sure how much was actually in there. But there's a bag of lots of trains, another bag of like bridges and stuff and all this track. So I took a chance at 20, thought I might turn it around for sort of 75, 80. But once I laid it out on my photography table, like you can see, there's loads of it. I said 200 plus pieces in the title, but there must have been at least 300. There's so much of it. I nearly ran out of room on my photography table and I've got a big photography table. It wasn't all Brio. Obviously Brio is like the top brand. There's like John Lewis stuff, there's stuff I've never heard of, but it was some Brio. I did say it's a mixture of different brands and everything and listed it for 150 and again, boom, got 150, my asking price within a few days again. Went to obviously a child, got a message from the buyer once it got there and they were really happy with it. Got lovely feedback, it's gone to a perfect home, child's going to enjoy this, they've got everything they could ever do, they can build a whole town. So with this Brio, small bundles might not be worth it. I'm not 100% sure. I only ever buy it in a big bundle like this. So the bigger the better, really. Cash converters. Check them out. They mess up on their prices. You know, they are a reselling shop. They check eBay for pricing. Write their stickers on at the eBay price and hope they sell. They slip up. Things go under the net. So always worth checking them out. Don't go in there thinking you're going to pick something up every time because you won't. But stuff like this, when it slips through, it's a good one. It tends to be bigger items like this keyboard is obviously they're not going to be posting it out keyboards tend to linger a bit longer maybe not as fast sellers so they've reduced the price i think it was 40 pound to pay for this in my local cash converters and yeah um, i've sold a couple of these now they seem to be strong money for floppy disk drive keyboards i think you can have lessons or you can learn songs on the floppy disks you put it in and it teaches you you can play along and things Complete with the box, manuals, power adapter, worked perfectly. I am willing, as you know, to ship it worldwide. Whoever wants it, I'm going to send it to you. I ain't scared. <laughs> this one might take a bit extra packaging care and time, but it did have its box and it had polystyrene inserts as well, which was a massive help. I think I ran an offer at the time. So it was listed for 175 and it sold for 171 and 60p. Strong, strong money again. £40, 170 take away your fees. I've still made probably over £100 profit. Happy days. That's what it's all about. Last three items, and they are the biggest, juiciest items. So, yeah, love these items. They are awesome. And again, you're not going to find them. Like, I've never seen anything like this before. So when they're rare, no competition, yeah, and just high-quality items, you can ask these punchy, punchy prices. And the first one. It's this vintage sharp uh, vertical turntable radio combo. Uh, obviously, as you know, normally LP players, vinyl record players, they sit flat, spin round, all that malarkey. This one was upwards and yeah, it was a big unit, big stocky thing. It's got the radio, it's got a tape player. It all lights up, it looks wicked. And again, if I had the space, if I was allowed, I'd be keeping something like this. It was so, so cool. I actually saw this or saw a later item, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, on Facebook Marketplace, selling it. And again, the old thing that I keep saying, paying up for quality. Uh, the other item I'll come on to, like I said, but this one, when I went to pick up the other item, he was a collector and he was downsizing his collection a bit. And again, he wasn't willing to ship internationally or ship it at all, even within the UK. So he had actually listed these items himself on eBay and not managed to sell them, even at reduced prices, just because obviously to sell something so niche, so expensive, within a certain radius of people willing to travel, you're just limiting yourself completely. Bought this off him with some speakers for 120. I think the speakers were worth 20 pounds on their own. They've sold for 
25 I think so they're gone so we say this owes me about 100 listed for 395 fully working the guy was a collector he took great care of it he showed me everything working it was working perfectly the only thing was a slight crackle on the radio put that in the description but I didn't put the buyer off they paid full top dollar for this it went for the 395 pound and it went to Australia so again the global shipping program I don't have to do anything but send it to eBay's uh, UK warehouse they deal with the rest they've got it safely now in Australia I've got great feedback again more than the perfect sale paid a hundred I've got nearly 400 pound for it so yeah just amazing this is the sort of item when you find it just buy it basically <laughs> Um, I had no competition that's the biggest thing when I was doing research people never got this much money I don't think but when I, when it came to me listing it I was the only one listing a perfectly conditioned like fully working one there was a faulty one I think someone was asking money for it so again things to note check your competition if you've got no competition you ask higher money fully working you can show it working you can prove it you can ask another premium Keep your eBay shop in good order, like I'm a top rated seller. Again, you can just keep asking and asking money. If you can post it out to the UK, good. If you can ship internationally, even better. I ticked all these boxes, which is exactly why I got the high, high price that I did. But yeah, there's higher to come yet. Okay, this item wasn't from that same buyer. This is something else. This was one of the main units I got for my big electronics haul. There's this item, and then there's another item I haven't even listed yet. So again, this item is exactly like the previous item, the competition, rarity, willing to ship it wherever people want it. Ticks all the boxes for me to get £450 for this item, which is again a new record for this item from what I've seen. Going on Terra Peak, Terra Peak goes back on a year's worth of eBay listings. As you know, eBay only goes back 90 days, but Terra Peak goes back a whole year. Doing my research, seeing what people were getting, they were getting nowhere near this amount. And again, if people were it was local collection and if people did post it they done it as an auction which was the wrong move again sending it worldwide no competition fully working again i whacked it up at 550 pound yeah shoot for the stars you can always come down if you go too cheap and it sells you can't go up otherwise you have to cancel it you get dings on your account not good you start high and work your way down that's exactly what i did 550 sat for a couple of months put best offers on as soon as I done that, boom, offer of 450, snapped it up because I only paid, I think it was 120, between 120 and 140 a pound I paid for this. That's a fair offer because I thought originally I might get 300, maybe pushing 350. So obviously I paid him 140 ish. I'll double my money minus the fees. Fair deal. When it came around to testing it and putting it on, no competition. So again, aiming high, not thinking how to get it, but I got it amazing sale and a really 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 nice item and the final item what is it and how much has it gone for boom 500 pound for this absolute beast of a machine this was the one i found on facebook marketplace like i said with the previous item it was marked up at 185 or 180 i sent my offer of 150 but he said someone else had offered 160 or something so yeah when I knew what this item was, I was like, outbid them, I'll pick it up. I think it was 170 I paid for in the end. With Facebook Marketplace, you've got to be so quick. You need to pick it up as soon as possible. I think this was, I saw this in the morning of the morning I picked it up, messaged him, there's people interested. I just said, I'll pay you this and I can pick it up within the hour. And that's exactly what I done. And when I got there, he was a collector and he had all these really high end, cool vintage hi fi equipment all set up. He's prepared to show me it all working and yeah just an amazing item yeah, again i'm repeating myself but high end no competition or very minimal competition willing to send it out to the world this is off to italy haven't actually sent it out yet but i've padded it like anything it, it will get there safely trust me i again i'm prepared to knock about my parcels if not prepared to kick it drop it don't send out parcels and again it's gone with ebay's gsp program so all i got to do is get it to ebay's warehouse and i'm safe from there again it was an upright player so it plays upright which was really cool as it was yeah just nice shield it's got a, a high-end 
tape player, there's a radio, there's all these cool knobs and everything on them. Really, really, really nice machine. And never found one before. Might not find one again. They're really rare, really high end. But again, if you do find one, or if you come across one, be prepared to pay up. This sort of unit is obviously high end. It's obviously worth a lot of money. So people will be asking a lot of money. If it's at a boot sale, you need to weigh up risk and reward. Obviously, if someone rocks up with this at a boot sale, you can't test it unless they've taken a video. And even then, it could be dodgy. So on a random field, you've got to weigh up how much you want to risk. If someone's asking £100 at a boot sale, try and get them down a bit, maybe. Hopefully, they've taken a video to show you of it working. It's all depending on how much you're willing to risk. So you was asked £100 and you took a risk, it wasn't working. With something like this, even as spares repairs, it's still going to be worth more than £100 not working because people are enthusiasts. They all fix it up, get it back to work and then sell it on again or keep it for themselves. So don't be put off with high-end units even if it isn't working or you're scared it won't work. You can still get your money back and then some. There we have it. Some absolutely lovely juicy sales there. Hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed selling them. I enjoyed making the money off them. The only thing I'd say about that was obviously, I like the, not as many sales, but bigger margins. But the only thing with that is returns. If something was to develop a fault or a return, obviously that's a big dink to be refunded. So I'd say if you are selling higher end items or you're not used to it, as soon as you get paid, don't touch that money until sort of a month's time, if you can. Put it off as much as you can until you do need it. So if you send it off, you spent the money like, oh, I'm buying all this new stuff. Then that dink, the return opens, even if they've changed their mind, you still got to refund them. Um, so yeah, that's my tip. Don't spend the money straight away. Don't get overexcited and spend it. Try and put it away if you can for a bit, unless you are dealing with this and you've got good cash flow, um, then obviously do it all you want. Also, the aim is for every item to be that juicy. But um, obviously, especially off season, like now, I've got four weeks until my boot sale starts, which is which is exciting. Obviously, during the winter months, I'm slogging away at the clothing a bit more, the shoes, trainers. I like my footwear, but the clothing, I get sick and tired of. It's lower end items, like not as much money coming in. Uh, it doesn't excite me as much, but yeah. Looking through this list of stuff, I've sold this throughout the winter, so it is doable. But again, it was contacts. Some of the higher end items came from my electronics hall. So again, that was making contacts. And yeah, just learning what things to look out for. If you don't know what it is, if you haven't heard of the brand, you've got to fit all the bits of the puzzle together. So where it's from, what it's made from. Yeah, just all things like that, how it's made, what it's made from. Yeah, just piece it all together. And if it's worth the risk, you hit it hard. And I'll say it again, you gotta pay up for quality if you want the quality. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Hit the like button if you did enjoy it. It helps me in the video out, so I'd appreciate that. If not subscribed to me already, make sure you are subscribed. Hit the bell button. Uh, appreciate you doing that, and it will be great to have you along. As I said, boot sale season is coming up thick and fast. I've got to crack on with this charity shop championship, so keep an eye out on the channel for that. Next week, I've got a special guest lined up for a live chat, so again, keep an eye out on the channel for that one. See you in the next video. Goodbye.